Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we look at a lot of low-cost tablets here on the channel and one brand that we haven't looked at for low-cost tablets is Apple, believe it or not. Uh, this is the 9.7 inch iPad. It's not new, it's been around for a little while and they're sold at a pretty competitive price for what they can do. Uh, this one starts at $329 normally, but I picked up a pair of these at Walmart the other day, brand new for $250. My daughters needed new iPads, and this was a great time to jump in. At the time I'm recording this video, that $250 price is still available, uh, so click on the link down below if you are interested. It's a very good price and a lot of capability that you'll get for that price point. So we're going to take a closer look and see what you can do with the lowest cost iPad in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this cheap iPad can do. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. The aesthetics here definitely look a bit dated. This is the same design as the iPad Air that released a number of years ago. Uh, so as such, the display won't be very close to the glass. It'll look like an older device, but inside it's actually relatively up to date. It's got an A10 Fusion chip. Uh, this is the same chip that you'll find in the iPhone 7, which is a very capable phone, and you'll get all of that horsepower here on the iPad. It is more than adequate, as you'll see, for some of the tasks that you might do. Uh, the display itself looks great. It's an IPS display, 2048 by 1536. Apple calls that a retina display. You get 264 points per inch. It looks great when you're reading on it. Uh, text and photos and everything else looks nice and sharp. And one of the nice things about iPads is that they really have some of the nicest tablet displays you will find. And they didn't skimp on that, even though the price on this one is lower. Uh, it will support the iPad OS when that's released a little bit later this year, so it will be getting updates for the foreseeable future. It supports 802.11 AC wireless, has Bluetooth on board. Uh, this one does not have GPS, uh, but I believe the one that has a cellular modem that costs more does, uh, but it will use Wi-Fi to determine uh, your location. Now, the inexpensive one I have here has 32 gigabytes of onboard storage. There is a 128 gigabyte version available for more money. And unfortunately, Apple isn't very kind about letting you plug in SD cards or other external storage. I believe the new iPad OS update will allow you to start using USB sticks and whatnot with it. But as far as apps are concerned and other things that are used in the course of your experience with the iPad, I would not anticipate any external storage coming for most applications anytime in the near future. So just be advised, you'll probably run out of space on this pretty quick if you plan to load it up with apps. And at that point, you might want to opt for the higher storage version. Now, battery life on this one is rated at about 10 hours for doing web browsing and that sort of thing. My experience with this has been pretty close to that. I think if you're doing gaming or messing around with video editing or whatever, uh, that stuff will certainly impact the battery life more significantly. But one of the things that I've loved about iPads over the years is how long they last throughout the day, and this one is no different. I was very pleased with the battery life that we got out of it. It also supports the Apple Pencil, and we'll be playing with that in a few minutes as well. Uh, that's a feature that wasn't on the low-end iPads until recently, so it might be fun for kids to be able to draw on the surface of the device with one of the best tablet pens in the industry. But one thing to keep in mind with children with this device is that it is made out of glass and it breaks very easily. I think screen replacement is likely a major profit center for Apple. Uh, so my advice is to get a really nice rugged case with a screen protector immediately. Uh, the second this one is done being shot here in this review, it is going into one of those cases before it goes to my daughter, and I would strongly urge you to do the same. Uh, you can, of course, get an Apple Care for this. I think it's about $70 for two years, and that will lower the price of that screen replacement if your kids drop it and break it. And I have found in the past that even with a rugged case, sometimes those screens crack anyhow, and it's very aggravating. Uh, so urge your kids to be careful with this because it does break easily. Now it weighs 1.03 pounds or 469 grams for the Wi-Fi version that we have here. So it's not all that heavy. Uh, you do have a number of ports to take a look at here, including a headphone jack, which is not all that common these days on Apple products. Over here, you have your power switch. On this side, nothing. On the bottom, you have a speaker and their proprietary lightning connector. This does not have USB-C, although we're seeing that now on the uh, iPad Pros. On the other side, you have your volume rocker adjustment. Uh, the camera on here is not spectacular, but it's usable. It's an 8-megapixel sensor on it. 
You can see an indoor picture I took in relatively low light here. It isn't bad. Uh, the video quality isn't bad out of it either. It does 1080p at 30 frames per second max. Again, it's good enough for what you're buying here and certainly better than a lot of other cheap tablets that I have looked at. Uh, you also have the front-facing camera here, of course, for doing FaceTime calls and other types of conferencing, if you wish, and of course, some selfies as well. Now, this lacks the fancy Face ID sensor that you see on the iPad Pro, but it does have the Touch ID sensor that has been around for a while. So if we turn the iPad back on here, just rest our thumb on that thumb sensor and push down, you are in. And it seems to be working just as well here as it does on other Apple devices that have that Touch ID sensor. Now, one thing a lot of us have not been happy about in the tablet market is the stagnation of performance from one year to the next. We haven't seen the types of performance gains that we get out of PCs and smartphones, for example. That is not a problem here, especially at this price point. Uh, so check out this app here. This is Affinity Photo. It is pretty much a Photoshop like application that runs on the iPad. Now, of course, this will run better on the iPad Pro. It'll feel a little snappier, but to be honest with you, I'm having a hard time finding anything to complain about with the performance on this iPad that costs a fraction of what that Pro device does. I can do a lot of real-time work here with curves and totally mess this up. I can reset everything, get a real-time response to what I'm working on, and I have been just very, very pleased with just how responsive and snappy this thing has been as I keep playing around with it. So I think if you're looking to do even some higher end kind of applications, if you find it in the App Store, I think it's actually going to run quite well on this. A little bit earlier, I was playing with some AR. I was taking out that fancy uh, Apple monitor that I'll never own and seeing how it would look in my room. As you can see here, it was able to render that 3D image and place it in space quite effectively, which again is pretty nice to see on a low-end tablet like this one. And it also does the basics quite well. We've got YouTube here running, of course, on the YouTube app. No problem with that whatsoever. I wouldn't expect there to be one. I can go full screen here. It looks great. Uh, the speaker quality is very good as well. It's not a stereo speaker, but it does sound nice and uh, got a good range of sound like all of the iPads do. And then, of course, it supports some of the other features of the uh, iOS or the soon-to-be iPad OS. Uh, like multitasking here. I did find that this function is a little faster on my iPad Pro, but it's really just fine for the price point here. You can get the video going here at the same time you're looking at web pages. You could adjust the size of both here and get uh, exactly what you're looking for. So overall for the basics with multitasking, YouTube, video performance, Netflix, all those things are going to be perfectly fine on here and perhaps probably one of the better experiences you will have at this price point. And you're also able to do some video editing on this thing too. I've got iMovie loaded up, which is Apple's free video editing application. This is a still image here that it's applying some motion to and then we've got my daughter uh, dancing around in front of a green screen. Uh, this is a 4K 60 frames per second video that I brought in from my iPhone. And one of the cool things that they just added to iMovie is the ability to uh, cut people out of green screens. So if you've been playing around with a green screen, you can now do it on your iPad for free. So if I select her clip there and go to overlays and click on green blue screen, it will automatically knock her out of the background. This is not a very well lit green screen, but you can see here that we are getting it to work fairly well. And if it was lit better, it would even look better. And I can also knock out some of the background here. So if I just select the video and then grab these little things here, I can actually move things around for the most part. There we go. I can grab this edge here and cut that part out. Maybe I'll get her foot back in there and do the same over here on the side and on this side. And now we've got a fairly good green screen cut out here. There are some adjustments to make it work a little bit better. And again, if it was better lit, we'd have a better shot, but it does give you an idea as to how quickly and how powerful these devices are getting here, that you can really start doing some pretty decent video editing on a device that costs 250 bucks and the software is free. Now, of course, if you bought a more powerful iPad, you would be able to work with higher resolutions on output. So while this will let you edit a 4K video, you can't output at 4K. It's maxing out at 1080p at 60 frames per second. More powerful iPads can do 4K at that frame rate. Now, as I mentioned, it also works with the Apple Pencil, but you have to make sure to get the right pencil because there are now two different versions of it. Uh, this one costs about $100. It is rounded and is the one designed for this iPad. There is a Pro version available that costs $150 for the Pro tablets, but this is the one you want to get. 
And Apple Pencil really is the best tablet pencil on the market. It's got great wrist detection, very low latency. Uh, it's got great pressure sensitivity as well. So I can just do a very light line here. And then if I push down harder, it gets darker. Uh, so it's really, really good. You've got this uh, angle here to it and I can go lightly with the angle or really push down hard and get a darker line there. It is just fantastic. And again, nothing better is out there. Now there are alternatives out there like the Logitech Crayon. It can draw very similar to this pencil in that you can do the regular lines or the tilt lines to get a thicker image, but it doesn't do the pressure sensitivity. So if you want the full feature set, you got to go with the Apple Pencil. And I think it's actually a pretty good investment if you are looking to do some digital art on your iPad. So let's move on now to gaming. We've got Fortnite running here and it's running pretty nicely. Now, of course, it won't be able to push the full resolution of the display in Fortnite, so it will run at lower settings, but it looks fine and it certainly plays just fine. Uh, so I think you'll be pleased with that if you have some Fortnite players in your house. Uh, we also tried Real Racing 3, which uh, looks pretty good on here too. You've got those crazy motion controls to it, but it really uh, had a very playable frame rate and it looked fantastic on the display here. There's a lot of great games in the App Store. And once they change the operating system over later this year, you'll be able to use your PlayStation 4 and Xbox controllers over Bluetooth. Uh, and I think that'll be a big boost for iPad gaming because they've had this proprietary game controller standard for a while and thankfully that is finally going away. And on the 3D Mark Slingshot Gaming Benchmark Test, we got a score of 3,652 out of this tablet. That puts it above the Nvidia Shield K1, uh, which has largely been the benchmark gaming tablet on Android. That came out a number of years ago. It was immensely powerful for the time, and there has yet to be an Android tablet that comes close to it at this price point, but this iPad does. So if you like mobile games, uh, this is going to do much better than you might see out of a lot of comparable Android tablets, depending on whether or not your game is available. So if you're looking for a tablet, you're going to have a hard time doing better than this one. They packed a ton of value into this thing, and that is unusual for Apple to do at this price point. There are not many limitations. You'll do better with a Pro tablet for performance, but you'll also be paying a lot more for that Pro tablet, and this one really is quite capable despite the low price tag. So definitely check it out if you're in the market. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.